This is Dr. Alexander Flint, founder of Bedrock Inventions. This is a short slide deck talking about our technology for ultrasound aligned ventriculostomy. Placement of ventriculostomies or external ventricular drains are a common procedure. They occur about 24,000 times a year in the United States, most of which occur in the intensive care unit at the bedside. Unfortunately, it's a blind technique. And this leads to high rates of malplacement, incorrect position of the catheter at the end of the procedure, as well as high rates of multiple passes across the sensitive brain tissue. Very briefly, there is a literature describing how often malplacement happens, and it's a frighteningly high number. Malplacement happens about 17% of the time. This number comes from three recent publications from Neurocritical Care, the Journal of Neurosurgery, and Neurosurgery. The problem of multiple passes has also been documented to a limited extent in the literature, which includes survey data, which practicing neurosurgeons in the aggregate described about 1.4 passes required per attempted ventriculostomy. And this other study looking at chart review and documented number of passes showing more than one pass in more than half the cases and an average of 2.17 passes across the, uh, the study. So what is the alternative to this current state of the art? Well, if it's a blind technique that's the problem, take off the blindfold. Image guidance is the solution, but there's some constraints. It has to work, it has to be easy, it can't be too expensive, and it cannot add too much time. So our solution is an ultrasound alignment system that is highly accurate, easy to use, not expensive to produce, it uses reusable ultrasound equipment, and a disposable single-use alignment system, and it adds less than 10 minutes to the surgical procedure. So here's what ventricular ultrasound looks like, in this case in a neonate. The point is that you can see very easily the distinction between the cortex overlying the ventricular system, you have gray signal in the brain substance, and very dark black signal in, uh, representing the fluid flowing in the ventricular system. So that contrast between the fatty brain tissue that is gray on ultrasound and the water effectively in the cerebrospinal fluid of, of the ventricular system, which is black on ultrasound, is a very easy signal uh, to discriminate. And it can allow for our technique, which is ultrasound-based alignment of the ventriculostomy. So here's one embodiment of our alignment system that shows a simple three-piece element that can be fashioned out of plastic that is tapped into a pre-fashioned twistral hole made in the skull with opening of the dura below per usual surgical techniques. This shows how the alignment system is, is built up. This can already be pre-assembled prior to tapping into the skull, but it consists of a lower element and a ball and stem element that is then enclosed by an upper element. The upper element screws against the bottom element. And when that is screwed fully, that secures the ball within uh, the ball and stem element and fixes the, the angle of the stem in place. So when this is loosened, this element here can be freely rotated. When this is tightened, this element is fixed in its position. And that's shown better here where we have side view showing the rotation of the inner ball and stem element, allowing for considerable degrees of freedom to see through your uh, twist drill hole in the stem part of the lower element. And then here's the top down view of the same thing. So once again, when this upper element is twisted against the lower element, that secures uh, the ball component and thus the angle of the stem. So here's the method described step by step. A sterile reusable uh, ultrasound probe, it's a sterilely sheathed ultrasound probe, is advanced into the stem of the ball and stem inner element after the alignment system has been tapped temporarily into the twist drill hole. And with the ultrasound probe in place, the ultrasound monitor shows the contrast between brain and cerebrospinal fluid 
after the probe and ball and stem element are rotated to obtain the optimum glide path to hit the ventricle. So once this image shows the ventricle to be down the middle of the screen in all planes visualized, the upper element is locked against the bottom element and that secures the ball and stem element enclosed within by the force of friction and that locks off the optimal trajectory for subsequent use. Also note that the distance between the base of the ultrasound probe and the top of the ventricular system can be easily measured off the ultrasound screen. The ultrasound probe can then be removed because again the ball and stem element is fixed in position and will not move so it is recording the optimum trajectory effectively. You can remove your ultrasound probe and then you place a spacer. This is a plastic spacer that has an outer diameter that matches the inner diameter of this stem element and a inner diameter that is suited to the ventricular catheter of your choice. With the adapter tube in place, the ventricular catheter is advanced with the usual inner stylet. Cerebrospinal fluid is returned once the stylet is removed. With CSF flow, the a stopper is placed that has a low profile that is no greater in diameter than the diameter of your EVD catheter, and that prevents excessive outflow of cerebrospinal fluid while the remainder of the procedure is being done. Given that there's a low profile stopper in place, this does not prevent removal of the device, so with a glove finger securing the catheter initially above as the device is withdrawn in counterclockwise fashion from the twist roll hole, and then a glove finger holding the base of the, the ventricular catheter as the device is withdrawn off the top of the catheter. This leaves one with the configuration of the ventricular catheter in place through the twist drill hole and then usual techniques are used to tunnel the ventricular catheter away from the site subcutaneously. And the, the ventricular catheter is then secured in place per usual practice. Here's an example of one of our prototypes in place in a skull model. In this case, the same steps will be highlighted uh, using a laser guide, so this can be visualized in this skull model that's obviously filled with air and not brain and cerebrospinal fluid. So when the alignment system is turned on, we see our target here. We're going to shoot for this X marks the spot down by the frame and magnum. Obviously, this is not our physiologic target in reality, but the purpose of this is to show the error involved, uh, the degree of uh, tolerance, and how much displacement you can have as you advance your catheter once you've determined your alignment. And so the farther away from the top of the skull, the better to demonstrate this, because uh, by basic trigonometry, the farther out you are, the more uh, error you'll have. So here we paint the target, in this case with the laser probe, the biological implementation, that's the ultrasound alignment step. Once we've painted the target, we secure it in place by screwing the upper element against the bottom element, and that secures the ball and stem. And then we remove our targeting system, in this case the laser probe, leaving the ball and stem fixed after we've screwed down this upper element. So this now re remembers that optimum trajectory. We then place our spacer, as described in the diagrams, and then through that spacer we place our ventricular drain. That's then advanced to the depth that could be measured with the ultrasound, in this case advanced until we get the resistance of the bone nearby the, the frame and magnum and we see that we hit our target. 
quite precisely. The tolerance here at this depth is uh, within a millimeter. And now we place a temporary soft hose clamp to block cerebrospinal fluid flow. And that allows us to then place our low profile stopper at the top of the ventricular drain after removal of the stylet. With this low profile stopper in place, the hose clamp is removed, and then the alignment device can be removed from the twist drill hole and removed off the top of the ventricular drain. So what about other imaging techniques? Common question is, you know, why not use CT or MRI at stereotaxis? Localization software. Well, there are several drawbacks to, to these approaches. One, you have to move the patient out of the ICU to obtain your scan in most circumstances. Or you need a very expensive, movable piece of equipment that can move from room to room to obtain a portable CAT scan in an ICU setting. Even if you choose to take that step of moving the patient out of the ICU to obtain a CT or an MRI out of the uh, intensive care unit and take that time required, you're still talking about a very expensive piece of capital equipment to perform a stereotaxis at the bedside. And essentially, uh, such equipment does not exist outside of operating rooms for, for that very reason, uh, the, the significant expense associated with, with that piece of equipment. So what about a ventricular scope? This is a question that we get from time to time. Well, the problem you have to remember is that you cannot see through the brain substance with a ventricular scope. So the pass is blind, just like the pass of a, an EVD. So it doesn't solve the problem. It only confirms your position once you're in the ventricle. And in fact, our technology can be used to place a ventricular scope accurately within the ventricle, uh, just as it can be used to place a, a ventricular catheter, because it suffers, the ventricular scope suffers from that same problem. It's a blind pass through the brain tissue. By contrast, as a reminder, bedside uh, ultrasound alignment is highly accurate. It's easy to use. It uses much lower cost equipment. You have your reusable ultrasound equipment, small initial capital uh, expenditure, and then you have disposable single-use alignment system. It adds less than 10 minutes to the procedure, and it can be done in a flexible fashion, either at the bedside most commonly or in the operating room uh, when the need arises. So once again, I'm Dr. Alexander Flint, founder of Bedrock Inventions. Visit our website, www.bedrockinventions.com or you can send me an email at alexander.flint at bedrockinventions.com. The patent pending technology described in this video clip is protected by this patent application on file with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office as well as filings in selected international jurisdictions.